Hi everyone, so in my last video I derived an expression for the on-axis electric field due to a uniformly charged rectangular sheet. So here's the result, it's a pretty complicated looking expression. As a quick reminder, um, we were only looking for the electric field um, of a point such as this R point um, on the diagram, which is directly above the centre uh, of the rectangular sheet. So it's got coordinates of 0, 0, z in this Cartesian coordinate system that we've uh, defined. So by symmetry, the electric field only points in the z direction. So we get this complicated looking arctan um, dependence. So if you'd like to see where that comes from, go have a look at that other video. But what we're going to do today is consider three specific limiting cases of this expression for the electric field that we got. For two reasons. Firstly, to help give you some intuition as to the meaning of this complicated looking expression. And secondly, just as a check, right? One useful way to check complicated results when you derive them is consider limiting cases um, where your problem approaches a simpler problem that you already know the answer to and check your uh, your more complicated answer against that. So there are two benefits to checking these limit limiting cases. So one useful bit of prerequisite knowledge that you're going to need for this video um, is the small angle approximation for uh, tan of something. So tan of some parameter x. It's roughly equal to x when x is small um, and x is measured in uh, in radians. Now this is basically just a first order uh, Taylor expansion. The useful property of this for, for our purpose in this video is that as a direct implication of tan x being roughly x, it's also true that the inverse tan of x is uh, is roughly x as well. You can kind of understand why that is graphically um, by imagining a graph of y equals tan x. Now, um, when x is small, the graph of y equals tan x is basically the graph of y equals x, right? Because tan x is approximately x. It's also a general property of functions and their inverses that an inverse function is the, the graph of an inverse function is the reflection of the graph of the original function in the line y equals x. But if you reflect the line y equals x in the line y equals x, you just get the same line, right? Nothing changes. And so that's one way of seeing why the inverse tan of x is also roughly equal to x. So having established that, let's get on with checking the limits of our electric field. The first limit I would like to consider is when z goes to infinity. So what happens? So when z goes to infinity, the magnitude of the electric field goes to, you're still going to have your prefactor of q over pi epsilon naught a b, where a and b are the length and uh, width of your rectangle. But as z gets very big, the denominator of the argument um, of the arctan function gets very large, and therefore the argument itself gets very small. So you can use the fact that tan inverse of something is roughly equal to the argument itself. So you could just put ab over 2z root a squared plus b squared plus 4z squared, or you could note uh, that in fact this a squared and the b squared are negligible as well, right? As z is getting very, very big, 4z squared is going to dominate over a squared plus b squared. And so what we're multiplying by is essentially the ab still has to be there on the top, the 2z in front of the square root still has to be there, but then you neglect the a squared plus b squared and you get the square root of 4z squared, which itself is just 2z, right? So we get ab over um, 2z times 2z. Now we can simplify that a little bit. The a's and the b's cancel, right? And you just get q over, again, the two's combined together into a four. So you get four pi epsilon naught um, z squared. Now this, in fact, should look familiar as the electric field that you get from Coulomb's law, right? It's just an inverse square field. And this is kind of interesting. The interpretation is that if you're far enough away, you can't sort of see the detailed structure of your charge, right? Everything just looks like a point charge if you're far enough away. And so it makes a lot of sense that we would expect to get the field of a, a point charge that we're familiar with. The second limiting case I want to consider is predictably what happens when z goes to zero. So let's do the same thing. When z goes to zero, what happens to the magnitude of the electric field? Well, you've still got your prefactor q over pi epsilon naught a b. When z goes to zero, the denominator of the argument of the arctan function goes to zero as well, because there is this z here. Um, and therefore your argument is going off to infinity. Now, if you picture your graph of y equals tan x, that graph has an asymptote, goes off to infinity for the first time 
when your x is pi over 2. Therefore, arctan of infinity is pi over 2. We get a, pack, a factor of pi over 2 here. Uh, let's see what happens while well, the pi's cancel. And you just get c, uh, q over uh, 2 epsilon naught a, b. You can combine the q and a, b into more sort of standard notation. This is charge divided by a, b, which is the total area. Um, that's often called the surface charge density, uh, denoted by sigma. So you can write that as sigma over um, 2 epsilon naught. Now, that might look familiar as the electric field of an infinite an infinitely big sheet of charge. That result can be derived pretty easily using Gauss's law applied to an infinitely big sheet. And again, it makes a lot of sense because it's saying that as z goes to zero, you're getting very, very close to the surface of your um, charged rectangle and is looking closer and closer to infinite, right? As you get closer and closer to the surface, um, you basically can't see the edges because they're so far away. And so your, your um, charged sheet looks approximately like an, like an infinite charge sheet. So there's our second limiting case, which makes physical sense. So I've saved the case that I personally found most interesting uh, until last. So let's have a look at um, what this third case is. So imagine taking A um, to infinity. So you're having sort of an infinitely long rectangular sheet of charge. At the same time, you can imagine taking B to zero so that it's getting less and less wide. But you do that in such a way that the product a, B remains constant, right? So you're sort of stretching out the rectangle, making it very, very long, very, very thin, but you're keeping the area finite. Now, um, let's go through the uh, through the maths that, that we get as a result of doing that, and then we'll interpret our result afterwards. So what happens to the electric field in this case? Well, as usual, we've still got our pre-factor Q over pi epsilon naught A, B. Um, let's keep the arctan in for now. So inverse tan of what's going to happen to the argument. Well, the dominant factor in this square root bit, because a is going to infinity and b is going to zero, the a is going to going to be the dominant term there, right? So this square root bit just simplifies approximately to the square root of a squared, which is just a. And so your argument is now a b over two z a approximately. Um, and so the a's cancel, um, which gives you q over pi epsilon naught a b arctan of just b over 2z. Now we can use our small angle approximation because we are left with something just proportional to b, but we've said that b is going to zero, right? Because we're sort of squashing up our plate in the y direction. Um, and so this goes towards q over pi epsilon naught a b just multiplied by um, b over 2z then the b's cancel uh, and so what you're going to get well q over 2 pi epsilon naught a z so in the same way that for the z going towards zero case we defined q over a b to be sigma we could do something similar with q over a, just the, the q divided by a. That is charge per unit length, in other words, linear charge density, which is often denoted by lambda. So we could call this, uh, write this as lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught z. Now this is actually a well-known electric field. It's the field that you get from an infinitely long uh, linear charge, right? This comes from, you can get that same result very quickly by applying Gauss's law and using a cylindrical surface and you get this characteristic one over R or in this case, one over Z dependent. So you can actually, which I found quite surprising and quite interesting, you can actually um, recover the infinitely long linear charge result by um, considering the lim limiting case of a rectangle. So there you go. After looking at those three limiting cases, I hope uh, you feel like you have a slightly better understanding of that original electric field expression. I find it very interesting how we can get all of these very specific limiting cases from just uh, just one expression. So thank you for watching and see you soon.